guys, it's another great week to listen into this podcast. And my only ask is share this episode with other people, okay? Especially the topic that we're talking about with Meta or Facebook performance bonuses. Um, You've likely gotten an invite to participate and you're like, I'm not sure how to do this. Well, guess what? You're in luck because today's episode is all about how to get it started, how to create a bank account, how to get things connected, and how to make sure you've got the right protocols set up. We have Luis Gonzalez Jr. and Maria Guajardo uh, from San Benito Consolidated Independent School District in Texas joining us. They have been part of the Performance Bonus Program since March of 2024, and they're going to share and break it down of how it all works. Um, We're also going to talk about the great stories that they are sharing on a week-by-week basis. It's incredible. Um, And so again, share this episode with others that are doing social media for schools. They will definitely benefit. But before we get started with the episode, let's get into this week's K-12 PR tip. All right, today's K-12 PR quick tip is CapCut, okay? If you are looking to create some engaging videos, but you don't have a ton of time, I am telling you my new resource, which is totally free, you do not have to have a paid version to do this, is CapCut. Uh, It can be used on your phone, it can be used on your desktop, and it is a great way to take pictures and videos and combine them together for a really engaging experience that you can post as Instagram or Facebook Reels. You could also use it on TikTok. You can use it on YouTube Shorts. Um, But I was literally able to take 30 images um, and put those in a video with music, with a few words on the screens in less than five minutes. Yes, less than five minutes. Um, We actually just sat down and had a little skills session inside our membership group where we shared some of these tips And I'm telling you, the videos that people are putting together and sharing are amazing and they don't take a ton of time. And so that is what we're all about in the membership crew. Um, It's a membership program that is a paid program, but we week by week are sharing tips and strategies and skills to take your storytelling to the next level. So if you want to check out uh, the membership program, jump on over to my um, website, Social School for EDU. You'll find a chance to uh, to join that. And we record all of our training sessions. So you'll be able to jump in and get that quick cap cut lesson in addition to hundreds of other trainings that are going to uh, help you shine in your storytelling for your school district. So cap cut, try it out. I'm telling you, it's not scary, very easy to use and you're going to produce some great stuff. All right, let's get into this week's podcast interview all about Facebook performance bonuses. Good morning and welcome to the podcast. You guys have been waiting for this episode because so many people are asking about Facebook performance bonus, and I have luckily found a couple people that are going to share with us. And so we have San Benito CISD out of Texas joining us today. Uh, Luis and Maria, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so first off, I just would love for you both to introduce yourself. So Luis, do you want to go go ahead and go first? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for having us. My name is Luis Gonzalez, and I'm the Director of Public Relations for the San Benito CISD School District. It's a public school district in South Texas. And uh, we're probably at the southern point of Texas. We like to call ourselves the tip of Texas. And so um, what our uh, department is responsible for is the communications of uh, various methods. Of course, we have a TV station that we run that we produce our own uh, videos and our own uh, audio uh, for different events throughout our district. We also have our social media, which is, of course, what we're going to be here discussing. And then, of course, we have print uh, publications as well. So, and of course, being the spokesperson, official spokespersons for the district as well as uh, that's our role as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Lu- Luis, can, uh, how long have you been with uh, San Benito? I've been with the district for 26 years, and I've been um, worked in various departments before this. I was the director of family and community engagement, which allowed me to interact and be active with 
a lot of families, a lot of parents, and a lot of community members as well. So that gave me the background that I think uh, would help, that helps me in my current role as a director of public relations, because that's exactly what we need to do is be able to communicate with our parents and our families and our community members. And so uh, my 17 years there uh, helped me out immensely in what I'm doing here today. Okay, awesome. And how about you, Maria Guajardo? <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself? Good morning and thank you for having us. So I'm Maria Guajardo. I'm the social media communication specialist here at San Miguel CISD. Um, and my background is in communications and marketing. And so I've been here for a year now, uh, a year and two months or so doing social media and communication. So I collaborate with um, KSBG, the new station that, that we have here in house. And uh, we tell the story of our district. So, Maria, what did you do before you joined the school district? Yeah. So before I joined the school district, I was doing social media management for uh, nonprofit organizations, um, mostly religious. And I was um, the marketing manager for a mobile homes uh, site, uh, Real Affordable Homes. And I that's where I discovered that this was my thing, that this is what what I really enjoyed doing. But prior to that, um, I was a stay-at-home mom, and prior to that, I was an uh, an army soldier. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, thank you for your service, and uh, you. what a great background. You know, I've been getting a lot of inspiration for some social media stuff from the religious sector. Just, I mean, they're doing a lot of things with reels and things like that, and so um, obviously, your work with nonprofit has has I'm sure served you well in the schools. It sure it it has it uh, yeah. especially when we're talking about budgets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta you you can't spend a lot of money, so we gotta yes. get get creative. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit, Maria, about the size of San Benito and and if Luis, you want to uh, ch chime in? Just wondering, how, like, about how many students, how many schools? Um. So I think uh, Luis might have a better. Okay response on that. <laughs> okay, so our students of uh, population district wide is about a little over 9,000 students between 9,000 9, and 9,500 students we average every year. And so we have at the current time we have 19 campuses. We have you know, 11 middle schools, we have three middle schools, we have um, actually four middle schools and I'll talk a little bit about why I added the fourth one. We have a ninth grade campus, a high school, we have a um, what's called a DAP, which is our behavioral transition um, to, uh, uh, serve, uh, campus. We also have a partnership with the Cameron County, which is our county. Uh, we since we are the, uh, our city is the location of the juvenile justice department. We have two campuses that we run for the juvenile the detention center in the county. So we have two extra schools there. We also have um, the only online um, academy. It's a Greyhound Academy, and it, that's an online academy where students kinder through 10th grade can participate online. That became very, uh, well, that was created, and that was became popular after COVID. So after COVID, there were still options parents wanted. So we um, submitted our paperwork necessary to the Texas Education Agency, and we were one of the very few we are one of the very few districts that has an online academy, which is a public school, but it still serves uh, students from K to 10th grade, not only for our community, but also surrounding communities and even parts of Texas. We also have a collegiate academy uh, for sixth through eighth grade. And that's the reason why I added the fourth middle school. So we have a, a very a diverse camp of a grouping of campuses and, uh, diverse group of students that we serve as well. Yeah. And uh, all, all of that under 10,000 students. Um, so that's, that's awesome. So what does your communications department look like, Luis? And just tell me a little bit about that TV station. So is that like running 24 seven or, or how does that work? The KSBG TV station is, has been around for over 20, 25 years. And it's uh, created, it was originally created so that we can create our own video content, our own production. When it came to um, storytelling, when it came to uh, documenting some of the work we wanted to do, uh, audio, uh, audio and visual presentation. So that was created 25 years ago. 
when the actual building was built, uh, we, we, are, we were uh, housed at a new campus at the time. And so it became a full-fledged running studio. So our studio can actually rival or can compete with some of the commercial studios that we have. And so we are able to do a lot of amazing things. We do our recording of uh, special uh, programming for fine arts. We have, we also do some of the community discussions. Uh, we'll be setting up our, uh, once again, bringing back our superintendent talks podcast through that KSBG format. And it's a, it's a great um, addition for any district. Uh, very few districts in our district uh, in this area of Texas has their own TV station that the district can say it's own TV station. So we control that element of it. A big component of what we do as well is of course the social media, which is growing every single day, every single aspect, every platform that you can think of, we are a part of and is ever changing. So that's where um, uh, Maria Guajardo's uh, expertise and work is really valuable because that is the guiding force that's taking us in a different direction when it comes to communications. We also have our own print shop, which we do our traditional um, printing of uh, items that the district needs, but it's also our publications where we get to print publications um, and all the information we need, visually uh, tangible information that's uh, provided through our print shop department. We also have a very unique collaboration with our um, high school's career and technology education department. So we do have interns that work periodically through the year. And so these are actually students that are trained in um, AV, we call AV, audiovisual um, productions. And so they are part of the, the team. So we will uh, very quick, very soon add those individuals um, to our team. We have a team of eight individuals uh, they're technical. They're, we have our technical uh, uh, staff members that actually do the visual and the audio productions. We have a TV manager, a, a TV coordinator that handles all the production of KSBG. We also have, like I said, Ms. Guajardo. We also are in charge of our web page of our district and um, other forms of communication as well. So, of course, our secretary, myself. So there's a team of eight in our department. And if you include our print shop, there's another uh, four. So there's 12 total in our umbrella. Okay. Oh. All right. That always helps a little bit with perspective. Um, we're going to link up to all of your, your website and your social media channels so that they can uh, take a look at those. Um, so we wanted to just dive in quickly first to the Facebook performance bonuses or the meta performance bonuses. Um, many people are getting these invites um, saying, hey, you can you can participate in these performance bonuses. So tell me what that process was like, how you receive payments, what do you guys use that money for? So um, Maria, do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Sure, um, thank you. So, <sighs> Is it okay if I provide like kind of how we got here? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, awesome. So at the beginning of the year, last year, we had um, meetings, tra a training meeting where we trained our, our social media specialists. So each of our campuses has a designated social media specialist. And um, some departments who have chosen to uh, open a Facebook page have, have their own app. Uh, I'm not sorry, I take it back, not specialists, but social media reps. Okay. Um, and so some departments have also chosen to open a page and they've designed, uh, designated someone. So at the beginning of the year, we had a meeting, a training meeting where we gave them a, an overall social media 101, you know, rundown. And we set expectations, you know, the kind of quality we wanted, the type of quantity we needed, and um, how to story tell, because that's very important. And so, um, everybody kind of just ran with it, right? And we would check in um, periodically to see how they're doing. Somebody was slacking, we're like, hey, you need to get on some more. My big thing was consistency. We knew we had, I knew we had to be consistent and I knew that um, we had to be engaging. So it was all about that. So we drove that from, you know, about September till, I mean, we still doing it, but it was, we were consistent, all of us. And um, around, this was March, when I got the invitation for our district page to participate. And so 
Of course, I, I'm like, this is the moment. This is what we've all, every creator, I believe that is ever online, we're, is looking for this, right? So we got there and I, I signed up right away. Of course, I, I notified Luis about it. I was like, I don't know what to do. He's like, let's just go and we'll figure out the rest later because let's start earning. Because we were, uh, our engagement was going up through the roof or we were growing. And so we knew that it was, okay, this is a moment we need. So we signed up and then um, got with uh, accounting in the meantime. But while that was happening, Within the next two weeks, all of our schools started getting invited um, at this point. Uh, and, and it happened like fast. And I'm like, okay, we really need to have a plan with what are we going to do with these funds? Because we're all, um, we're all getting invited. So we have um, a total of um, 18 pages, right? 16 are schools. We have one department and one fan page. They all became eligible to monetize. So um we signed them all up. We're like, is this going to be something that they have a choice for? Like, do they say yes or no, or they're in immediately. So Louise made the decisions like, yes, they're in. <laughs> they want to or not. We're on anyway. Right. Right. Uh, we're showing up every day anyway. So let's, let's get us all in. Um, and it, finance was a little hesitant um, at first when we brought it up because we didn't want to connect this to any of our personal accounts or put our personal information on there. Um, we wanted to connect it, of course, to the district. So they uh, took their steps, right? Um, they reached uh, to other, reached out to other finance departments in other districts uh, to see if they'd been through that, and they had not, and um, and some were unfamiliar with it. So we kind of were the, I mean, as far as I know, and of the context that we had, we were the first to take the jump, right, mm -hmm. and say, let's do it, and so. Just to kind of um, like make it easier on their peace of mind, it was like, it's it's probably better if we create a, a new bank account, not connect it. Uh, so it's, for the, it's in the district, but not connected to all the district stuff, right? That way that's just for Facebook revenue because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. Uh, we've never done it, right? So if it makes you feel better, cool, let's do that. It, just give me somewhere to put the money. So... <laughs> Uh, they opened it and uh, they gave us the details. I went to the finance office and and there with uh, the finance director, um, Mr. Cortez, we filled everything out and we filled the payment uh, payout options um, one by one. And then we discovered through the process that uh, we don't have to do one by one after after you've signed up three or four. It's it like saves your info and be OK. So this is a little background. Yeah. Um, all of our and and those of you listening might understand all of our pages are birthed under our district page, right? So yeah, so you all... have a business manager or business portfolio right. that is for the district, and all of your pages are are connected in that account. Correct. Okay. Correct. So uh, once a few, I you know signed up a few, and it, it recognized that oh well, you have all of these that are also um, you know monetizing. Let's just click. Here, like that we want them to go there so after that the process was pretty easy um well i say easy loosely because we all have worked with meta business suite <laughs> yes you see we these have. Hairs, half of them are from meta business suite right <laughs> and so um we did have a, a hiccup on on one of them and we're still sorting that out that it just did not want to link. It still does not want to link to a payout. So it's the funds are just collecting. And so we're going back and forth with uh, Meta support to get that sorted out. So I just, you know, full warning, you might run into that issue. And you at that point, you will have to uh, deal with Meta Business Suite. But we have not had luck on that account as of yet. But all the other accounts fell right in. And then we started um, at the end of the month, uh, they send us a statement. And then uh, on the on the day that they deposit, they send us a remittance form. So we have track of everything um, that we earned, everything that that's coming in. And I send that over to finance. So at the end of the month, um, or I, I notify them what we made this month and then, um, you know, get with that statement. And then I send them the remittance form and then them know, okay, this is what should be getting deposited. And so we just keep that um, tracking system, you know, going that way we know what to expect, what's coming in. And, you know, we can, um, you know, account for it. 
So um, most pages, we manage social media for about 85 school districts across the country. And in the Holy. last six to nine months, <laughs> we've gotten invites, I think, on every page. Um, it's always just a little bit like, oh, but everybody's kind of nervous. So I'm so glad that we're talking today. So I've got my my email up right now. And so if you guys are listening, you know, bonus unlocked, start collecting the performance bonus. We're going to get into what you're collecting and how, how much money it is in a minute, Maria. But um, it just kind of describes step by step of going to the Facebook app, getting into the professional dashboard. So you'd be logged in as your school. You can navigate to the monetization tab in the professional dashboard. Um, then you can navigate to bonuses and then you get started to complete the payout setup. So when you guys created, so you basically created a separate account in the district where this money was going to go. Is that like a checking account or a savings account or what, like, are you right. plugging in like a uh, routing information, yes. like routing number and then uh, uh, an account number? Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, I couldn't tell you if it's a banking or saving or what specifically it is, but uh, it is a bank account with a routing and a uh, account number. Okay. And is that Maria, when you went in and set all those up, um, you were logged in, I'm assuming as the school district then, or did, did you somehow, because I've, I've talked to a couple people who have set this up and they're like, well, ultimately it has to be a person who's a manager to the page mm -hmm. that ultimately sets that up. But is your name tied at all yes in it is um so i am set up as the business um administrator on facebook um i'm i have full administrative rights so um in the business um manager uh i i'm there it's okay. me um and so when you go through to the settings on the monetization tab there will be a list of finance managers or finance administrators i can't remember the term exactly but it's specifically finance and so the name has to be on there um i have run into other issues because we do have a couple of schools that have individual logins that are not uh, they were not formed the way we traditionally formed the pages they they made their own login um and through those um i'm not i'm i was just the uh, for some reason, I was just the uh, admin, right? So I had to go and add myself, but it is it is a rigmarole <laughs> um, because um, I have to sign in with their login because we control all the logins, right? right. Um, even if they created their own to make their own page, I have the login details. like, And so I will log in as, as that account and then I'll go, I'll have to add myself as a friend. That's what I think is, is crazy that, Meta creates all these loops, but I mean, understandably, so I think they're trying to protect us, but um, I had to go add myself as a friend on, on my page that I log into, that I administrate everything with, and then add myself as a finance manager and then okay. do the changes I have to make and then log myself back up. So it was like, it is, a, it is a process. So all of this is something that I learned through trial and error because there really is the information out there is very vague and meta is changing all the time the way that they do things the, the way that where you find things so if you happen to find something it's not going to look like that anymore <laughs> right so I had to just like try try and try different ways but yeah it is it is a little time consuming at first but once you have everything set up and you remember <laughs> Yeah. what you did last time you just do it again <laughs> right and i just want to add i'm sorry i just want to add that the important part as an administrator over a district communications de uh, department or for the district um this is all new it's all new to everyone I, there was no uh nobody i could call uh, other districts around us were not doing this yet or hadn't gotten to that level yet so this is all new so if there's any advice that i would give department heads that are uh, overseeing communications and social media for their district is to set up your internal protocols first. In other words, how are those Facebook pages going to be set up? Are they going to be set up under the direction of one administrator, um, such as Maria? And so are we all under the same um, uh, umbrella? Because that's gonna be key when you're setting up all, they, they start making money, you start doing, you become very successful at this, then you're gonna have like 10, 12, 13, 14, depending on how many pages you have in your district, the accounting office is gonna go crazy. They're not gonna to wanna to monitor 
16, 20 different uh, accounts, they want to put everything in one account. One is accountability for finance because they have to also account for all those uh, measures. And we also advise um, those that are starting this off as well, do not, do not put in your personal information as the uh, collection or the collector of these funds because then you can get into some really sticky situations because then it becomes, uh, it looks as if you're you're taking in that money personally. And then yeah. there may be a trace, but you're going to have to go back and really prove that you did transfer those funds and that you did use them. So to avoid all that for professionalism and for accountability for everyone, just make sure your, your, your uh, accountability systems are there and that your process are there before you start implementing something like this. Because um, there was some couple of situations where we had to go back and correct some of the things we did in some of the accounts. Um, so uh, I know everybody gets excited because there, you know, we have some money sitting there that can be used. But at the same time, you need to follow your district or your organizational uh, finance procedures so that you don't um, get into those sticky situations where you're going to have to prove yourself out of it. Because then, yeah, you can really get into some really uh, some situations you don't want to get into, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And also uh, on that is that um, theoretically, it would be easy to go in and update, make the changes you need, put it on the correct account, change the, you know, you could backtrace. But again, we're talking about Meta and it doesn't work. <laughs> you like you're like okay here i have to change my tax information like because we did we ran into that and it's like no you need to do this and that and so we go and do that and it doesn't open it and you're like oh my god so it's like just i know we're excited but just hang on you know make sure that you know you know what to do but just don't connect yourself to it um and so but we took care of it but it was it was it was a headache. <laughs> yeah. And I can imagine, I guess for most people listening, I mean, not every school has that many Facebook pages. I would think a uh, great advice would be get that district page, the, the main page set up first, mm -hmm. um, get that figured out. And then as you go and, and, and get success with that, then you could add some of those other pages as well. Um, Luis, I just wanted to say thank you for leaning into this because I mean, everybody's busy and you know, we don't have it all figured out, but somebody has got to be like the, the lead lead person and just say, well, we're going to figure this out. We're going to try it out. And um, I'm just really glad that you guys took initiative because Facebook is a free platform for us to use, which is still amazing after, you know, all these years and all the reach we can get organically without having to pay them. It's a free platform for us to use, but when you're creating great content, like many of the schools across the country are, you're helping give uh, content to people that Facebook can then serve ads to. And so that's the reason why there's compensation back to great creative pages like our school accounts, because we're basically helping keep people on the platform, which eventually, um, you know, get, uh, get, get ad revenue for Facebook. Louise, can you tell me a little bit about, did you really have to do some heavy convincing to your finance department to say, Hey, we're going to try this because a lot of finance people th hear the word Facebook and they just cringe and say, no. <laughs> well, of course it was all new. And of course, uh, you know, like I said, the, the operational protocols were had to be followed, and so this was something new. They, uh, we had, we knew what to do when we received actual donations by checks from organizations. We knew that there was a system there, but this is an electronic process. So it, the electronic process, and because it's meta, and they have they're ever changing, like way Maria mentioned, it's ever changing. It's kind of. Um, um, you got to get figure it out yourself in order to get uh, get it going. So it was all a learning process, and so I would ju I just sold it to our district and our administrators to say that well, hey, there's money sitting there. They, this is all basically free money um, that we're getting. So it, I think we need to at least look at it and what do we need to do in order to set it up. And so we were able to do that again. Took patience, took some time. 
Um, so we were able to do that. So that, that way, again, we go back to our finance uh, protocols and making sure that everything's legit in terms of where it comes from, where it goes to and how it's spent. That's the other component now is that we get to decide how are we going to utilize those funds? Where are they gonna go to? How are we gonna use them? So, and again, um, depending on, on the month, uh, that's how much of a, of a uh, I guess, an amount we get every year, I mean, every month. So it, one month can be so much money, the next month could be a little more increase. So it's ever changing. So it's, it's just one of those things, it's like a donation. You know, you're gonna get a donation but we don't know how much it's going to be or if it's going to happen again this year or not. So we kind of have, have to operate as extra money, but if there's extra money sitting out there, um, I don't see why someone would not want to pursue that uh, unless there's catches to it. But we know, like you said, uh, our, our traffic is generating um, ads. It's generating um, uh, some of the companies that uh, uh, Facebook works with. And so they're giving us a little bit of that money that is being generated by the traffic that's being caused by our, uh, you know, our, our viewers. Okay. And the, and this is the question. How much money are we talking about? You can, can you guys <laughs> share some, some highs and lows of what you guys have been able to see? Cause some people are like, okay, sounds like yeah. a, a lot of work. If it's yeah. for 10 bucks, I don't think I'm going to go through this. <laughs> yeah. And, right. and that's one of the things, that's one of the things we started looking at is that, Okay, there was like forty five dollars there. Okay, well, let, let's see what that what that does. And so uh, we started noticing. We started getting uh, notices of three hundred, of two hundred fifty, of uh, you know they they and they would vary. And so then we started like uh, Maria said, we got invited first as the district page, and then we started noticing that the other pages under us were starting to generate funds as well. So uh, depending on the topic, I guess, depending on the kind of traffic that that page was generating, that's how much money was eventually coming in. So we were looking at some months, we were looking at, again, like $200. We were by, by page, uh, we were looking at 50 here, 75 there. In total, we probably have about $2,700 that we have accumulated since the beginning. And I know well, that because actually, that's actually what I count. Actually, if I could, go ahead, Maria. Oh, go ahead. It's um, so because this ties into the the process that we have with finance. So that we actually, um, yes, he is correct. Two thousand seven hundred dollars that have come, um, that have been moved from the finance that account that they created, um, over to like tangible to our budget, um, but it's uh about four well over $4,000 since we started in March. But remember, because we're talking about fluctuations, we had summer and everybody was off and not really much posting. So we had, we built up this momentum um, through the end of the, uh, May, you know, all the end of a school um, events and things like that generated a lot of, um, a lot of that revenue. And then, you know, it died down during the summer. We were still, uh, as a district, uh, bringing in more. We, at, overall, uh, the district Facebook page is is the one that uh, creates, uh, so far, has created the most uh, revenue. Um, and then we beginning of the year, school activities, it picked up again. And so we, you know, we started um, earning more. So from the end of March, where, when we became, it was signed up on, through the summer, in the beginning of August, it's four thousand dollars plus, um, and I say that because I'm estimating what I recall in my head. Um, but we still haven't received um, the payment of September, which is going to accumulate all of August, where we all started posting first day of school stuff, first day of school activity, and first week, and and we made a big deal about it, right? Like we're back at school, pictures everywhere uh, each day. Um, one of us was at every campus, um, taking photos, uh, getting all the cute stuff. And we, uh, stretched it out over the course of a week so that all week long, we were creating engagement. We were creating, uh, getting reach and it, there is some strategy to it. Um, and so it, it is, I think for the times that we're in right now, where, um, 
you know, budgets are, are getting cut across everywhere, um, sp particularly for our department that, um, you know, we're in public relations and, and um, we don't get as much of the education part of, of the pie <laughs> um, to get the, those kind of funds to continue to tell the story, to continue to create that content and to elevate our content to stand out. Um, $4,000 is a lot, you know, it's, it's, it's something, right? And so um, I think it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. What do you, what have you used the money for so far or have you, or have you, have you not yeah. touched it yet? Luis? We just, yeah, we just started uh, thinking about that and we started looking at, okay, let's reinvest into the equipment that we use for social media. In other words, cameras, uh, gimbals. Uh, did I say that correct, Maria? Gimbals. Yes. <laughs> um, and so the things that would help yeah. us create better reels, better uh, content. So we're looking at what can we do in order to buy those items so that that way it doesn't come out of our regular operational monies. We can use it for something else. So uh, it, in that way, it's, it, it has helped us. So it's good when you have that extra money that you can say, okay, let's buy those extra things. It's just like anybody who, you know, our pro personal bank accounts, we end up with $500 extra at the end of the month. Okay, what are we going to do with that money? What are we going to, are we going <laughs> to accumulate it so that we can get something big? Or are we going to buy those little things that we need uh, that, that aren't in our budget? So um, yeah, that's kind of what we look at. Maria, do you want to chime in on that? Or? Right. Um, no. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> he you said it so well. Um, no, it's it's just uh, it's like you said. It's like uh, we weren't thinking about getting it before. Actually, it was out of the question before this, right? It was like, look, guys, there isn't you know extra money, right? And so we're gonna have to make it work with the equipment that we have. And it was like, well, you know, it's been working, but. You know, you're hearing it too. Other other districts are getting invited to create this content. So the competition is getting greater. So who's going to invest it on, on that, right? And at the end of the day for us, it's about celebrating our students and doing justice to the stuff that they're doing every single day at every single campus. Something's always happening. And, um, you know, we need the tools to be able to capture that, right? And so... I think it's gotten us started on on that. And so our our content can be greater and can compete. And we're all grabbing for attention, right? Um, there is a reason why this is even a thing is that, you know, Facebook is looking for ways to keep people on their platform. Every social media platform is, is doing that. So who's going to get the priority on the newsfeed? Is the one that has the most engaging, the best looking content, the one that actually competes? So um we're trying to do justice for what we're doing here, you know, what our students are doing everywhere. And, you know, they deserve their reel. They deserve yeah. that photo. They deserve full coverage. And so I think that um, in that sense, uh, it's been a blessing, right? That we're able to, we don't have those tools yet. We've, we've ordered them, but I know that they're going to uh, be put to good use here. Um, yeah. yeah. What, uh, what implications and Luis, I'm not sure if you know this with, taxes because some people are going to say okay we get this money put in this account now we're schools mm -hmm. so uh, often we're tax exempt but do you have any idea how is this money that facebook gives the school is there tax implications on that well that's okay. good no go ahead well we do fill out a w9 okay so um and and we uh we fill it out appropriately we are a school district so we we fall under that label on that um, I, we okay. haven't wrapped up a tax year yet. So I don't, I don't know from that point. I don't know if, if Luis has from experience. Well, I, I think it's going to be probably looked at in terms of revenue, uh, revenue in terms of how, what have we done in terms of sales, uh, it's like a club sales, uh, donations. So I think it will fall along those lines. And so if there's any tax issue or tax, uh, taxes that we need to assess or be accounted for, would have to fall under that because this is revenue that we're uh, we're getting, and so maybe it'll fall under those. And so that's where we we turn to our experts at finance, so they can <laughs> they can work on that. We'll work on the content and generating the monies, and they can uh, generate they they can tell us what it is that we need to pay for our, for taxes or how that's going to be counted. But I assume 
because it is a revenue that we're generating uh, that somehow it would fall under those uh, accounting procedures. And again, I'm not a, I didn't go to school for accounting, so I'm terrible with that, but <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there's, uh, it'll fall under one of those uh, uh, line items uh, that yeah. we have to account for when revenues are coming in. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think in a lot of cases, um, some of that is tax free because it's going to basically a, you know, a public organization or whatever, but um, you certainly set it up the right way. So they have all the documentation and they have right. the accounting and for, you know, the accounts and all of that. And so um, that's awesome. Um, this has really been helpful. Um, I, we will have both of your, um, contact information in the show notes. So if somebody wants to reach out, um, I'm assuming it's okay if people reach oh, out yeah. with, with questions, yes. um, what, what would you say? And maybe you guys can each have your own, you know, your favorite social media, um, story that's been, you know, maybe proven to be, have the most engagement over, let's just say the last six, eight months, do you have a favorite uh, story that you've been able to share um, that that might inspire folks uh, listening? Putting you on the spot. But. Well, I know that uh, when I look at Facebook and we look at our activities, our engagement, our most popular posts, because that's available on Facebook. You can look to see what has been the most popular the past 28 days and up to all the way up to 90 days, what's been the most popular post. So it's very interesting when you see those uh, results of uh, what was popular. And so um, there was a time, and, and again, it depends on the time of year and the new cycle that's going on. So uh, interesting, we had a couple of very uh, high profile people within our district that passed away. And so those posts were very popular at that time when I started looking at the January, uh, February uh, results. But now we're looking at um, student of the weeks. I know that uh, we recently had a student of the week that was featured on our one of our local TV stations. So that story was very popular. Uh, we also get very popular story or very a good response from um, feel good stories. I guess that's one of them. But we also have stories on um, or a lot of traffic when it comes to weather when it comes to school closures, when it comes to uh, changes of schedule, because there's uh, there's something going on, whether it's cold or rain or something's going on with the weather. I noticed that those stories tend to trend uh, or, or reach a lot of people as well. And so, um, and of course we control the content of what we post on there. And uh, sometimes we do have to address some sticky issues, like when it comes to school threats, when it comes to some of the things that we have to deal with when it comes to safety. So those also trend, tend to be very uh, trendy and very uh, uh, out there, but still the good feel good stories are the ones that uh, make me feel good that, okay, we're, we're on the right direction. We, we're, we need to focus more on this. Well, and I just spotted um, this would, by the time this records, this is last month, but um, you had a program that just celebrated 50 years and I saw a video that you probably put together with your TV news station. I'm imagining it had 93 shares like that is absolutely incredible because that is huge reach. I'm not sure how many thousands and thousands of people that story reached, yeah. um, but that obviously is a, a feel good story. It wrapped in, you know, a lot of nostalgia of, yes. um, you know, the program. Yeah. Yeah. That was our, we just had it this weekend. It was the 50th reunion of what we call our San Benito Bells. They're the drill team uh, of our district dance drill team. And so they were celebrating 50 years. And so that was really popular. Even on my personal Facebook page, there was so many posts of friends and everybody posting about it. I can see where that story is going to be trending uh, when we get those figures coming in. Uh, it was also homecoming week. I know you alluded to that as well. So there was a lot of traffic on our district page on just homecoming topics. And it just so happened that that was also the 50th reunion. So there was a lot of um, uh, chatter, a lot of movement, a lot of visuals, a lot of likes happening uh, on our district pages because of those events. So yeah, things yeah, like that, yeah. they're probably gonna show up in the month of October when we look at so what September was like, and that probably will yeah, be a yeah. peak stories or most popular stories. So again, 
if anybody's listening out there, look at your district events and look at the ones that are really popular. Um, sometimes uh, county fairs are, are the most popular thing in one district or uh, something, some big traditional event that's happening in your district. They're, you know, they'll look to the district to see what's going on, what's the schedule, what's what time is this, what time is that. Mm -hmm. So those will increase your traffic. Is there's anything that uh, we can share? Is that look at theme month weeks or theme months because that will increase your traffic as well. Yeah, so that's one thing that um, Mr. Gonzalez um, put in place when when he came over was. Uh, those uh, content pillars, right, which we did not previously have. It was just kind of like whatever was coming in, we were putting it out. And so um, through that, we've been able to share with our followers pretty much what to expect, right? So, you know, on Mondays, we're doing academics. On Tuesdays, we're doing athletics. On Wednesdays, we're doing, you know, fine arts. On Thursdays is our community. On Fridays is our, you know, our game day and it's um, our staff highlight. So week after week after week, our followers, come to expect these things from us right and so that keeps them coming back um even if we don't pop up on their news feed they you know they know oh it's friday i know i'm going to see game day info i know i'm going to probably see highlights so this is the stuff that sets uh, sets us up you know to um you know in in kind of um a niche way right like we know that this is what San Diego school district is doing right um and so they know what to expect from us when it comes to to uh, content. Yeah. And you're, you're able to really tell a balanced story. Um, yes. There's a lot to celebrate and uh, I, I love that approach. Um, and you kind of said it, uh, Maria, I mean, it's great that you're getting money, but the bottom line is there's a lot to celebrate. And this is a great way to connect your community to the great things happening in your school district. Of course, many of those folks are paying taxes, whether they have kids attending your school or not. And so really being able to celebrate those things. Um, but why not earn a little bit of extra money to get that equipment um, right. that's going to help you? Um, I could see maybe schools also using it as incentives for uh, maybe your uh, social media contributors uh, being able to give give uh, something back to them or some gift cards to do to do little raffles or whatever you'd want to, but mm -hmm. to pour it back into the program so that we can continue um, to celebrate those stories. So right. um, we've covered a lot today um, and I'd love to chat for another hour. We'll probably have to have you back where we can talk a little bit more just about all the social media stories that you've shared. Um, but what is the best way to stay connected to you? Is it your email address or what would you say, Maria? Um, well, for me, yes, my email, meguajardo at sbcisd.net. Um, of course, you can always reach me at uh, our social media site, um, sbcisd on Facebook and sambonito.cisd on Instagram. Okay. So if they message there, they're probably going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And how about, how about you, Luis? Same thing, my email, uh, L Gonzalez, L-G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-S at sbcisd.net. And so that's good. A phone call also, I still take phone calls from people. So if they, they can call uh, our district website. We, we try to make sure, of course, we're the communications department, so we better have our website up to date. And so uh, that's one thing that we want to make sure is that all the contact information that we have on our website is um, up to date. So everything should be there in case they need to get a hold of us. It's there. Uh, they just go to our website at um, www.spcisd.net and look for our public relations department under under the department um, section and take us, it'll take you there and all the contact information is there. So that, and then also just looking at it on Facebook, send us a messenger, um, uh, something, some information you want to share with us there, you're, you're welcome to as well. Awesome. Well, you guys keep up the amazing work. I hope the, yeah. the dollars keep uh, continuing to climb with the performance <laughs> bonus. And, uh, you know, everybody should definitely jump over, take a look at the great content and the stories that they're sharing. Um, you guys are doing some great things. So thank you so thank much you. for sharing with us today. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you, you Andrew. Andrew for having All us. right, guys. Thanks for listening in today. If you've got questions, reach out. And next week, we'll be back with another fantastic guest. We'll see you soon and keep telling those thank stories. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.